Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, it's 9.30, not, just a little less than 24 hours from last night's game. Not much you can say. Uh, it's a good thing I didn't do this video last night. Uh, obviously, my voice was shot. Still a little shot here today, but... Um, I mean, I kind of needed some time to to let it all sink in, and then kind of give my you know my thoughts on it. And it, I mean, it, this was a tough one. I mean, <clears throat> this is probably the you know this is the prototypical Marvin Lewis game. Um, Bengals had it. I mean, they at one point up seventeen nothing. Um, you can kind of. You, you can feel the tide turn a little bit, obviously in the in the second, uh, the second quarter, right after the Bengals, you know, we're up seventeen nothing. We scored that touchdown late. Um, <clears throat> the the Steelers come out and then I mean they drive right down the field, um, and, and and get a field goal. It ended up being three plays, um, thirty three yards. They only gained thirty three yards. However, thirty eight of those were on penalties. Uh, I mean. It, it took 31 seconds, and then the the Steelers were able to get that field goal. That's when you could feel the, the tide start to turn in this game. Um, because, you know, as we know, the Bengals, they just, they don't, they don't make adjustments in the second half. It's not Marvin Lewis's game. He, he's just never been, never been good at that. And, you know, when you have, you know, the penalties like they had, I believe it was 173, I believe is what it was. Um, I mean, when you set a franchise record for penalty yards in a game, it, it's just it's it's not good. And um, this was this was typical Bengals. And uh, this one this one stings. This one's gonna hurt for a while. Um, that's why, like I said, I didn't want to do it last night. I was pretty fired up. Um, you know, first and foremost, though, I, I should have got this out earlier. But um, you know, thoughts and prayers to to Ryan Shazier. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully he has a, a full and speedy recovery. Um, you know, a, a player that always, he flies around a lot. Um, and sadly, he does leave with the crown of his helmet a lot. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, by doing that, these kind of injuries happen. Um, it, it was scary to see, you know, obviously being down at the stadium was, um, once we realized who it was and talking to a couple of Steelers fans around us, uh, it was just, you know, it, it was sad and it was pretty scary to see. Um, so obviously thoughts and prayers with Ryan Chase here, hopefully, like I said, for a full recovery. Um, you, you never want to see anything like that. Uh, same thing on the other side with Vontez Perfect um, taking the hit uh, that he did from uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. Um, uh, you know, I'll kind of address that here, you know, later on. But, um, you know, th this was a rough and tough game. And, uh, you know, this is, you know, typical Bengal Steelers. And, and that's the kind of game that you uh, you kind of expect. Um, one thing, I, and I did see it was a great idea, the intensity of this game, the, the hatred between these two teams, it, it's obviously there, and um, it's it's prevalent. Um, I, I saw a suggestion, and, and I agree with it a thousand percent, um, maybe don't play this game on primetime. I, I, it's, it really intensifies this rivalry more and makes it, I think, a lot worse than what it should be and what it could be. Uh, if you look at the game at Pittsburgh earlier in the year, it wasn't even remotely this close uh, to as as bad. Um, you know some of the plays. That's the kind of stuff that you 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 don't want to see. Uh, you know, I, I want to see a hard a hard played football game between two good teams, two teams that hate each other uh, but respect each other. Uh, Andy Dalton after the end of the game, you know, kneeling down and praying with a lot of the Steelers players. Um, you know, 100% class act. Um, on the flip side, you got uh, Juju, you know Smith Schuster in his interview post game. Then you hear Antonio Brown in the in the background yelling karma, and, and, and laughing about the perfect injury. You know that's not, you know Vontez perfect isn't perfect. Believe me, he's not. And I'm the first one to jump him uh, when it when it comes down to it. But you know what? You never want to see a guy um, take a hit like he did. Um, you know I'm gonna address it here real quick actually before I get to the rest of the game. Um, Originally, I was mad at at the hit overall, but like I said, you, you kind of take some time. In a game like this, this is one where you really you can't jump to conclusions immediately after the game. Um, you got to let things simmer and digest a little bit, and then then come to your conclusions and, and then give your thoughts, uh, just for a clear mindset. Uh, that's how I'm gonna that's how I'm gonna approach this one. Uh, I mean, 
the and then I tweet out that I you know I, I you know people who know me know that I, I'm a big fan of uh, of uh, of USC and uh, seeing you know Juju Smith I, I you know I love him I, I think he's just fantastic um, the hit the block on on perfect you know. At first, when I saw it, I was, I was upset about it, calling it dirty. Um, I don't think it was really necessarily dirty. The part that I disagree with was the standing over and taunting. Um, and props to David DeCastro for trying to get you know Juju away from it all. Um, you know, props to him for that. Um, you know, obviously a good hit like that. I don't think he would have been suspended had he just blocked him and that was it and just left. Uh, I don't think it would have been an issue. But the fact he stood over him and taunted him—that's what got the uh, the suspension. Uh, but, you know, it is, you know, that's the kind of game. And so, you know, kind of based off of the reactions, it seemed like they were targeting perfect in this game. Um, you know, I, and I think that's where, that's the point I, I, I don't like. Uh, like I said, Vontez Burfecht, not perfect by any means. He's not. And, and I'm not calling him a saint or anything because he's, he's taken some cheap shots. And, and those obviously I disagree with. But um, I think it's time now that the NFL, if they're going to make it a game to where it is, um, almost like touch football, um, then I think you have to get obviously some of the, the dirtier hits, some of the, you know, the headshots out, start, you know, implement the, the targeting rule like you have it in college. You know, I, I'm a thousand percent for that. You know, you, you take out a guy, leave with the crown in your helmet, boom. Uh, I, I'm all for that. You know, obviously, you know, football's football. You want it to be hard hitting. And, and, you know, some of those plays were, you know, they were great. There were some really hard hits. And that's what you want out of a game like this. Um, but obviously some of the, the dirtier shots, um, which has been prevalent on, on all sides in this in this rivalry. It's not just one team or the other. It's all around. Both teams are, are not, you know, are not clear of anything in, in this case. Um, but, you know, that's what I'm going to say. You know, Carl uh, Paganelli and his crew, you know, they I thought they, they really took away from a lot of this game. Uh, by throwing as many flags as they did, I mean, in instances like that, I, I think that you really you break up the flow of it, and you you do you know take away from a lot of it, and that's what unfortunately happened in this game. Um, but you know, once again, the the Pittsburgh Steelers they come into Paul Brown Stadium and they leave they leave laughing. I mean, they are um, they own the Cincinnati Bengals. It's it's plain and simple. Saw a stat last night uh, while we were at uh, Logger House before the game. Um, the Bengals were two and seventeen in the last ten years in prime time, and that is absolutely unacceptable. It's the worst in the NFL. Now you're two and eighteen. You know, two wins in twenty games uh, in in prime time, and that's on Marvin Lewis. This game's on Marvin Lewis. Um, once again, he 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 does things that make you scratch your head, and um, in a game where, you know, Andy Dalton, you know, plays, I think, a, a pretty good game. He was 21-36, um, 234 yards, two touchdowns, both of those to A.J. Green. Should have had another one, um, but that was called back for um, for the, the, the flag, uh, the holding call on, on Gio Bernard. You know, I mean, in a game where you hold, you know, Ben Roethlisberger 24-40 uh, for 290 yards, uh, two touchdowns, and one pick. I mean, all you can do is shake your head. It's really, you know, all you can do. And I, I do have to give props to, to Antonio Brown. That dude it, it reflects why he's the best receiver in the league, hands down. Um, A.J. Green, you know, we're, we're blessed here in Cincinnati to have, a, uh, to have A.J. Green, who is certainly one of the, one of the tops. Um, but we, we saw a matchup last night with two of the very best in the game going head-to-head. And, and neither one honestly disappointed. Um, you know, Dalton, like I said, you know, he did have a couple of bad throws here and there. Um, but, you know, 21 to 36, like I said, 234 yards, two touchdowns, should have had a third. You know, it, what can you say? I mean, you, you can't really say too much more about it. You know, the Bengals were up 17 nothing. you know, early on. I mean, early on in this game, and it felt like, you know, the tide, it, it it felt good. It was like, okay, if we can get this big victory here in prime time, boom, here we go. We can kind of move forward with it. And then the wheels start to fall off right before the end of the half. Like I said, you, you know, the the Steelers, I mean, it, 
you, you watch and let's see here. Let me let me have that uh, the the ball possession drive chart here. You know the the first four possessions for the Steelers. First possession intercepted. Um, next three they punt. You I mean you force them to punt. You know on play or on drives of seven plays, four plays, and six plays. To where they only went 33 yards on the first one, 12 on the second, and then 20 on the third. And then, then you force them, you know, you force three straight punts. The Bengals get points out of it. Um, and, and three of those four uh, drives, you get a field goal after the interception. So that's three points off a of turnover. Then you get your touchdown on a 12 play, 85 yard drive, where you get six first downs on that drive. Um, the drive began at your 15 yard line, and they went all the way down and scored that touchdown. You know, that's what, that's what is, you know, that's crucial. Um, you know, then you go, um, the six play 43 yard drive. You did have a 10 yard, um, holding penalty, uh, which came back to, to bite them. Um, and they were forced to punt there. Then you get a touchdown where you go 90, um, basically 98 yards is, is what the, the, the total yards were. Um, but you had 20, uh, 20 of those were removed due to penalty. So it was a net net drive of, of 78, um, you know, another play where or another drive of six first downs or more, and, and you get that touchdown right, you know, right at the end of the half. And, I mean, and things really were feeling good. You're up 17 nothing on the Pittsburgh Steelers coming into this game at 9-2, and two, the number one seed at this point in time in the, in the AFC, and, and the team that a lot of people are favoring to, to go to the Super Bowl and, and beyond. And, you know, they looked really, really good going into it. Um, you know, they, they did struggle last week against Green Bay, but it's the Steelers. You know what you're going to get from them, and, you know, they, they did not look ready to play. Um, the Bengals came out on fire. It was great to see. And then the wheels fall off. I mean, the wheels just fell right off. And um, it, it it's very, very, very frustrating to have this team and to see how the Bengals handle everything. And, and they just... Under Marvin Lewis, you know, this this definitely is this is this is him. This is you know the Marvin Lewis era in a nutshell right here was this game. Um, this was definitely the hardest game of the year, um, you know, to to deal with and, and to cope with. No excuse for how it ended. Um, the Bengals never, you know, you're up seventeen nothing, then seventeen three, and then you know right after that. You get one field goal. You have uh, five drives in the second half, and you punt on a three and out on the very first possession of the second half. You know, like I said, you go three and out. Then you get you know after the Steelers um, they get a touchdown to make it seventeen ten. Then it kind of you know okay you're starting to get a little worrisome. Bengals drive down ten plays sixty two yards. Did have another holding penalty, and you know it. It, it seems they, they, they do those kind of things to set themselves back. And that was the one where, like I said, it was the um, – that was the costly one. Then you, but you get a field goal out of it, though. That field goal is crucial. Gets you right back up by 10. And then three straight punts. You know, you have a drive of five plays, then you punt. And then two straight three and outs. Um, the Bengals, I mean, they just – they were awful in the second in the second half. Plain and simple, you cannot – Against the Pittsburgh Steelers team, against any team, uh, for that matter, in the NFL, you cannot afford to have these things happen. The Bengals once again do, and it comes right back and bites them. And you know, we now fall to five and seven, and that really, you know, a chance, you know, a, a win in that game, um, you know, puts them right back in the playoff hunt. I mean, they are right smack dab in it. This loss here drops them right back to where we kind of thought they would be early on. Uh, now you got. Now you have to regroup. You've got a lot of injuries. Joe Mixon sustains a concussion on a on a brutal hit. I mean, he was he was sandwiched by two guys and he was done. He was out. And um, you know that's the kind of you know those are the kind of injuries you're gonna you're gonna be picking up. Plus, you got George Aloka getting a suspension um, from a, a hit earlier on in the game. You know, so you know you now have to regroup. And after a tough game like this, to where you lose Vontaze Perfect. And Joe Mixon, now you've you've got you got five or so days to really get things kind of rolling again, and get back on the horse against the Chicago Bears team that is, 
you know, record wise, not so good, but can easily come right back and, and, and get you at home as well. So the Cincinnati Bengals team, they have a lot of work to do. Um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's baffling to me and it's, you, you just can't help but be dumbfounded watching this team play in prime time, especially against the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, as much as we hate them here in Cincinnati and, you know, you, you see Twitter and, and everyone, you know, shredding the organization for how dirty they are and all that stuff. You know what? They, they continue to beat us. They dominate us. It, I don't care what people say. Yeah. You know, these games are, they're, they're not the most pleasant and this was not the, the best the NFL has put out and it, it, it's reflecting, um, you know, how their, you know, their product is like, is showing on, on, on TV. And it's not a good product right now. And especially when you have uh, games like they, we did last night, it, it just, it's, that's just not good. And um, again, I, this is a, it's a really frustrating game to, to, to digest and, and come off of, um, you know, like I said, you've, you've got, you know, a time of possession of uh, where the Bengals had the advantage, 30 minutes and 11 seconds compared to 29 minutes and 49 seconds. The the most damning statistic in this one is you have the the first half, the first quarter, the Bengals um, had an 8 minute, 38 second um, possession advantage um, compared to 6 minutes and 22 seconds in the first quarter for Pittsburgh. Second quarter was dominated by the Bengals there, um, you know, four minutes and 45 seconds. And those were the three, uh, the three punts that the Bengals defense were able to force. The Bengals had 10 minutes and 15 seconds uh, of, of possession in the second quarter. And that right there showed because, you know, you're able to put up, um, you know, you're able to put up points like they did. And, you know, it, it's, it, that's what you have to do. Um, you know, yeah, granted you put out, uh, 10 points, you know, you're up 10 nothing at the end of the first quarter, and then you're up 17 nothing right after that. But, you know, in, in looking at everything, then the, and the third quarter is where it, it evened out. Even though the Bengals were, um, you know, they were forced to, you know, really eat some clock, and that's what they did. I mean, they just, in, in looking at it, you know, 7 minutes and 39 seconds of possession in the third quarter compared to 7 minutes and 21 seconds in the third for the Steelers, you know, that's you know okay that, that's good you know your de- both defenses were you know were solid they you know kept the other one you know for the most part out of the end zone fourth quarters where it really turned here and this is probably the most frustrating part of this entire game um, 11 minutes and 21 seconds of possession for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the fourth quarter compared to three minutes and 39 seconds for the Cincinnati Bengals and, and and the worst part about it was after the perfect hit, obviously, you know, you take out one of their, you know, one of your big um, defensive cogs. Uh, the same thing happened with Shazier. You look at, you know, when Shazier was out of the game, you could tell the Steelers' defense was missing him. The way the Bengals' offense was getting ready, they were getting it going. They were getting, um, they were getting the chunk plays, you know, in the running game. Um, but, you know, you... You have um, Giovanni Bernard, who uh, 13 rushes for 77 yards. His longest was 13. Joe Mixon had 34 uh, ru- or 34 yards on seven rushes. Uh, his longest was 10. Um, Dalton did pick up a uh, an 11 yard gain. Uh, he had two rushes for nine yards. Um, you know, so not you know not having Shazier in there was you know was obviously a pretty big um, pretty big loss there for him. Uh, but they adjusted well. The Bengals did not with perfect. Granted, it was towards the end of the game. Um, after the perfect hit, the Steelers were able to capitalize um, on, a, on another touchdown. Um, this time to, uh, to Antonio Brown, who you know again shows why he's the best. Um, but then the maddening, the most the most maddening part of it all was the Bengals. You know, with a chance to, uh, you know. With a tie game, the Bengals have a chance to drive down the field and try and get something out of it, you know, possibly for the win. What do they do? Three plays, five yards, and got a punt. And, of course, it, it, it's it's a bad punt. Doesn't go very well. Steelers get the ball at the 41-yard line, eight plays, 34 yards. Um, five of those were uh, aided by a penalty. Um, and, you know, you, you kick a field goal to win the game with no time left, and, and – it is what it is. The sad part about it, Marvin Lewis did not use one timeout. That he, 
let him go. And I, I don't know what, I don't know what's going through his head. Um, but that's the most maddening part of it all is the the time management by Marvin Lewis continues to. It's 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 a it's unbelievable how mysterious it is. You know, trying to figure out what goes through his head. Uh, it it's tough. Um, but then you know you pick out a couple plays here and there. Um, obviously, the most notable was the um, the uh, Le'Veon Bell touchdown uh, catch. You know, he gets thirty five yards. William Jackson the third stands there and lets Le'Veon Bell run by him. And you know, good on Le'Veon Bell. He kept going. Um, very, he was, you know, he was in by, you know, a, you know, a centimeter. Um, but you know, again, Le'Veon Bell shows why he's one of the best in the league, if not the best running back in the league. Um, and definitely one of the biggest weapons. He had five receptions for 106 yards on top of 18 rushes for 76 yards. I mean, what can you say? And then, you know, Antonio Brown on top of that eight receptions for 101 yards. Uh, he had a long of uh, 24 and along with that touchdown as well. Martavis Bryant, four receptions, 40 yards. Uh, his longest was 15. Um, I mean, again, I mean, what more can you say? The Steelers, they consistently get it done. And, um, you know, in, in the first half, like I said, the Bengals were looking fantastic. A.J. Green, seven receptions, 77 yards uh, last night. Brandon LaFell adds 55 yards, uh, receiving on four receptions. Tyler Croft, two for 30. Uh, C.J. Uzama, uh, he had one for 21. Gio was in there. Tyler Boyd, Josh Malone, and Joe Mixon. So, you know, you have six of our receivers had a uh, reception longer than 10 yards. And, you know, those those kind of big plays right there are obviously what you need, uh, you know, to keep drives alive and keep things going. But they just continuously seem to find ways to lose. And this is... We can harp on all we want, but this comes down to Marvin Lewis and how he coaches his team. Um, the lack of discipline. Trey Kirkpatrick last night was horrific in uh, in his game. Uh, he looked awful. Um, he was burned by Antonio Brown a couple times. Had to get pass interference. You know, he had to take him down a couple times, and he just looked, you know, like he looked lost. And you know, it, it's it's situations like that to where. You know that's the that's the most frustrating part of it all is is dealing with you know a game as a as a fan you you sit there and you watch it and you're like come on man like what are you doing um, you you know you know Antonio Brown you know how good he is and and you know that he's gonna make plays it's just that is what it is how uh, you know it's Antonio Brown so but again it's it's extra it's those extra plays that you give them you know, by, you know, the, the pass interference calls where you take them down and, you know, give them free yardage. And, um, you, those are the kind of things that, that just cannot, cannot happen. And, and it's things that continue to happen with this team. And again, to me, this falls on Marvin Lewis and it, it's only on him. And, um, you know, it's like, he doesn't get his guys ready to, uh, ready to play. And, you know, when you go three plays and when you cover 71 yards in three plays in 31 seconds right before the end of the half and let them kick a 30-yard field goal to, to gain momentum going into the in, into the half, um, you know, knowing that you're going to get the ball in the second half and you come out and you punt, and then it, it's just it, – then you have the, like I said, the 35-yard pass, the nine-play, 78-yard drive, took almost five minutes off the clock – and we don't make a tackle on Le'Veon Bell. We don't even, like, knock him out of bounds. William Jackson said he thought he stepped out, and those kind of things happen. Uh, then we, you know, we respond with a 10-play, 52-yard drive and a 41-yard field goal. You know, great. But then it's the Steelers just dominate. 37-yard um, field goal and an 11-play, 74-yard drive that took up four and a half minutes. Uh, a 9-play, 80-yard drive. That was the game-tying touchdown from uh, Roethlisberger to Antonio Brown. That took four minutes and ten seconds, and then you go with the Boswell um, dry or the Boswell game-winning field goal. Uh, that took up two minutes and forty-two seconds, and not one timeout was used. Those are the kind of things that are are so frustrating when dealing with this uh, with this team and and this coaching staff. It's it's time 
to it's time to make a change. And obviously right now at this point in time, you're not going to see it in the middle of the season. Uh, that's not how this team operates, and I'm fine with that. You know, I, I think you right now you, you, you play for pride and you play not to look uh, completely foolish. That's what this team's, you know, doing right now. I mean, they've, let's face it, they haven't looked good in, you know, in a few games this year. And uh, this was another one where we start off as the tail of two halves. And this, like I said, this is the, this is the Marvin Lewis era in a nutshell. This is it right here, plain and simple. You know, come out, look, you know, come out like gangbusters in the first half and come out like you are completely and utterly unprepared in the second half. That's the Marvin Lewis era in a, in a nutshell. And, you know, as great as it is, you know, as as what he as what he's done for this franchise when he came in and took this team and, and you know, and really and, and flip-flopped everything and really sent him, you know, to the top of the division um, for a while, you know, to match up with the Steelers and, and, and the Ravens. You know, you can't thank Marvin Lewis enough for what he's done for this organization. Um, and, and I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, crap on them all you want right now. But, you know, what he's done for this franchise uh, in, in this time period, you know, you, you can't help but but say thank you and uh, tip your cap to him. But it's time for a change. And it, this is evident, especially this season, what we've seen. And it's been evident every single playoff game, almost every single playoff game, that and this team's just not ready for prime time when it comes to you know this coaching staff and how they how they prepare their guys. It's just they it's time for a new voice in, in the organization um, at, at the at, at the coaching you know head coach spot, and um, it's time to make that move. And, and I think it'll happen here at the end of the year. Unfortunately, you know for Marvin, you hate to see anyone lose their job, um, but you know it it's it's time and. Um, you know, again, uh, this one, like I said, this one was a tough one to uh, to to deal with, and a tough one to really, uh, like I said, digest. It, this was not fun, and um, but you know, unfortunately, that's you know, as Bengals fans, that's what we're used to here, especially facing the Steelers. Um, Steelers moved to ten and two um, in a game that they did not play well, and they, I don't think they deserve to win. But they came out with a victory, and um, like I said, this is a game where you tip your cap to them because you know they were able to uh, to come away and, and make plays at the right times and the most crucial times, and the Bengals did not. And um, you know, it's like I said, this one stings a little bit. This one hurts. Now you've got you know a couple of days to prepare for the Chicago Bears. You know who they were coming off of a 15-14 loss to uh, the San Francisco 49ers. So. You know that's what you got to deal with. You know you get a chance to go to six and seven on the year. Um, right now, I think five hundred be beautiful for this team. I, I don't see it happening. I just there, it it seems like it's completely lost now. Uh, a loss like this really uh, really does some damage to uh, to a team um, to a team especially that doesn't have the the correct leadership at the head coach position. And, and like I said, you know. Marvin, for what he's done here with this organization, you can't thank him enough for what he's done. It's just now time for a change. And I said it earlier on in the year. I'm saying it again. I'm going to repeat it. It's just it's time for a change here. So, uh, like I said, this was a tough one. But, you know, hey, um, it <laughs> it is what it is. You know, it's like I said, it's part of it doing, you know, being a Bengals fan. And we're used to it, unfortunately. Uh, but like I said, the Steelers moved to 10-2 on the season. And, you know, Again, continue to uh, to dominate the Bengals at home. Um, hell, they could play anywhere, and the Bengals would. Uh, I don't think would look you know look too solid in the you know against this team. So, um, Steelers and once again get it done here. Um, you know, move to ten and two. Bengals fall to five and seven. So, yeah, tough one. So, but. As always, you know, we are going to, uh, you know, continue to support, you know, support this team, continue to, uh, to do these videos, you know, post game, you know, got to, got to vent somehow. So as always, thank you guys so much for your support. Follow me on Twitter at I am Chris Asbrock. I'm also on Instagram with that, uh, feel the impact sports.com. And also check out my YouTube page where I've got a couple of videos as well on there. So as always, thank you guys so much for your support and have yourselves a fantastic night. Thank you. Bye.